going ahead from government schemes and unicorn inspirations let us now ride towards one of the critical component of the startup ecosystem angel investing angel investing as we all know plays a vital role in helping early stage companies get off the ground but it can also be a complex and challenging landscape to navigate which is why we have brought together some of the most successful angel investors to share their insights and strategies with you so let me take this opportunity to call on the stage ms kanchi daya head uh, regional head of indian angels network ma'am please come on the stage and i would like all of you to give a round of applause to her mr shubham jhuria partner and cfo at eravati ventures mr vinod keni co-founder of qi ventures mrs yamika mehra partner at favc and first check mr mohit gulati managing partner at iti growth opportunities fund and to moderate this panel i would like to call mr jatin kataria thank you so much all of you and sir over to you good morning everyone okay uh, if you can hear me just raise your hand okay if you can hear me just raise your hand okay if you can hear me just clap once If you can hear me just clap twice. If you can hear me just clap thrice. Okay, just raise your hand again. Okay, uh, turn 180 degree and say shabash to you in advance for this session. Uh thank you so much for being here. I welcome all the uh, panelists today and we are going to talk talk a lot in line to uh, Uh, angel investments and practices and insights so anybody who is looking for to raise or anybody is looking for to invest we are going to talk some secrets of uh, how things are happening uh, with an amazing uh, uh, people that we have on the stage uh, first thing is uh, uh, vinod keni who is with us uh, sir from uh, uh, qi ventures uh, uh, sir studied a lot like i was going trying to go in, go through your education background and couple of ms and mba and lot of executive programs uh, so i'm great you are a student of life i guess at large Uh, very happy to uh, have you with us and uh, uh, there are few more uh, companies beyond qr ventures are there with you as well eventually would uh, looking forward to know more about it as well but a huge round of applause for uh, vinod ji uh, everybody uh, i'll i'll uh, give an intro and i'll ask a question and then i'll give an intro and i'll ask a question so we'll intro and question will go together and then we'll go for the for the round as well um, sir it's all about uh, uh, angel investments that is, that is that we need to go into discussions and now you are been into the game for a very very long time uh, just a quick thing that what was your first investments uh, when it happened and how you decided to invest in that company and question 2 is parallel to it that what was the first investment that you told somebody to put into the startup uh, and what was it and uh, how they did investments yeah or to you so um I started doing angel investments I think in the 1990s I think much before a lot of you were born um so my first investment um in in a startup at that time was in I think year 95 and this was a a, a telecom uh, startup in the US okay um small amount um the company actually ended up getting acquired by Cisco okay so I got lucky with that one but then i did a series of investments after that which all sort of bombed uh but that was my first investment and i think that was also the first investment where i got a bunch of my friends and family to also invest lovely super uh, so it's, it's always good to know when when the kick off happened right and it happened in 90s so and of course uh, eventually tech got acquired so it's a very solid first thing that you yeah, have created yeah yeah and and then of course I've, I've, there were a couple of others in in the media space that did phenomenally well as well but then I've also had some fairly high-profile flameouts where you've invested a lot of money, and they've all just gone down the down the drain. Lovely, thank you. Uh, we move to this side of it. Uh, Shubham, you've been very active with uh, startup space for a long time. You very proactively associate with startups. Your energy is kind of a virus for a lot of them people like me as well, which is a good kind of virus. But uh, Shubham comes from Eravati Ventures. Uh, they were doing uh, advisory value addition. helping startups to grow and now uh, uh, the fund uh, as well 
same question to you, I guess that is a very interesting question to attend for all of us that uh, your first investment, how you did the investment, what was your decision thing, and you helping somebody to invest in startup, what was it, and how they did the investment? Right, um, so my first investment was probably, I think, um, eight years back, it was a medical devices company. Uh, the opportunity came in through one of the family members, and again, the, the pedigree of the founders were great, and I didn't understand too much about the space, so it was, it was just a bet. It was just some early money that was made, and it was just a, it was just a fly that was taken on the company. Uh, the company shut in maybe 15 months after that, uh, so uh, not, not a great fly, but the founder was good. Uh, I think they, I think they uh, gave back the initial capital to all the investors from uh, over a period of time. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a short loss uh, as such, but it wasn't really a gain as well. And if you're investing in an asset class like, um, like we are in, uh, obviously, you know, anything, anything with even just you're getting your capital back is kind of like a loss itself. Uh, but yes, that was, that was the first investment. Um, haven't had too many uh, such scenarios post that. Uh, but after that, uh, with investment banking, um, that's where the uh, major work in the startup ecosystem was done. It was about convincing not just angels, it was convincing larger fund, fund houses um, to invest, invest in startups. So I think the largest learning there was that if you don't like the company and if you don't know enough about the company, you cannot convince anyone else. I think, I think that was the larger reasoning, right? If someone asks you that, okay, boss, what's the margin like? It's a, it's a simple question, but if you're just doing deal making, uh, as they call it, and not, uh, not understanding the company, dalali ka kaam jo bolte hai, uh, right? If you're doing that, then no one's gonna, even if the company is good, just because you got it, got them there, then no one's gonna invest in it, uh, right? So knowing about the company is one of the larger, larger learnings, just uh, in and out. Lovely, okay, nice to know. So, uh, uh, he's a CA, so all the CA out there, uh, if you're looking for it to be a, uh, managing the VC fund. Uh, he is the uh, guy to talk to on how the uh, academic and then practice and the funding journey can go ahead. Thanks, Subham. Uh, we are going to Yamika. Uh, uh, come from a very solid uh, business development and consulting background, so did, you know, talked a lot on the money side of it. Uh, she been into Horses Table as well, season four. Uh, I'm sure all, all the Sunil Sethi fan must be jealous of you. Uh, Oh. <laughs> of course, but uh, two vertical FIFC and uh, first check, I guess uh, very rarest people understand the venture building or a studio structure which you are anyway doing it right now and then eventually uh, having a 3000 plus member network at uh, first check uh, uh, right now, maybe something in line to that as well and again, same question to you, your first investment. Uh, and somebody whom you helped them to re did the first investment and a little story about it. Great, thank you so much for waiting up for this panel and not rushing off to the lunch. So thank you for being here to listen to us. Uh, I'll tell you about myself, of course, uh, I was very kindly introduced. Uh, about angel investing, uh, in the past two, two and a half years, I've actually built an angel network wherein angels invest in idea state startups. Something which is absolutely unheard of. Matlab, aap log kabhi raise karne jate hoge, to log bolte hoge ki product leke aao, revenue leke aao, tab invest karenge, etc. Uh, we've been raising funds in idea state startups. That has, in its, has its own journey and is, has its own story, how easy or difficult it has been. But that has been what I've been doing. So I've spoken to a lot of, not just first time founders, a lot of first time angel investors, people who want to begin angel investing. I'll come to that, but quickly I'll answer the question, which was that what was my first angel investment? So, very simply, I have invested in a friend's business, a friend who wanted to continue her family's 200-year-old legacy, but because it is only passed on to the sons, the daughter had to struggle to start something of her own, although she was carrying on the legacy. Uh, so I supported her with her first check, her first investment, and uh, I'm not seeing my exit anywhere anytime soon, but I'm happy about it. Uh, and uh, in terms of the first uh, investment that I sought or I raised, um, you will not believe the, f uh, the first person that I raised fund from in this angel network that I just spoke to you about or told you about, I have not even seen the face of that person so far. I mean, he's invested in at least four of our portfolio startups over the last uh, couple of years, and I've only spoken to him on the phone. And uh, I don't know him personally. I, 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 
uh, reached out to him via a random WhatsApp group, which was for HR leaders. It's a very interesting story. If any one of you want to hear it, I'll be happy to relate. But uh, yeah, that has been my two firsts. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I, I guess you, you, you summing the code of Superman, that faith part comes first, trust part comes later. I guess that's what's happening in your investment story with others as well. We are, you have not met them. Uh, but yeah, things are happening on the go. Absolutely. I mean, fundraising, investments, all of that, there's a whole trust game that plays out and trust can be built in many different ways and forms. So that is something that has to be learnt and that has to be imbibed. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to this side. We're going to Mohit. Uh, somebody who started journey uh, as an analyst way back in 2009 with the hedge fund, uh, right, if I am correct. So 2009, 2030, so you can imagine the number of years and expertise and time that you have uh, spent into the uh, startup ecosystem and uh, he is part of, he is running uh, ITI growth opportunity fund. Uh, that is also, it's been almost six years that is uh, up and running and he also sitting on to lot of uh, startup boards as a board advisor or executive advisor uh, or even a board observer as well. So been very active uh, involved seeing, observing the growth of the uh, ventures as well. Uh, uh, and of course, come from an engineering MBA background, it's a very solid combo uh, that is famous. Uh, and I come from that combo as well. Uh, so uh, a round of applause for uh, him as well. Uh, and the same uh, question to you uh, before we go for the claps. Uh, uh, your first investment, what was your reasoning and somebody whom you helped to do the first investments. And before that, a huge applause for all the uh, panelists that we have on the stage. Thank you. I'm just keeping you a little active while you're sitting there. Sir, over to you. Thanks. Um, thank you everyone for waiting around. I know lunch is holding you. Um, I'll just give you a very quick um, intro on myself. I started as an equity analyst uh, at a hedge fund, then institutional equities. Uh, went on to become an angel investor, not because I chose to. Um, I think anyone who's made successful investments will tell you that you don't choose investments. They come to you, the world collides around you, and things just happen for you. Um, my first investment, also one of my best investments ever, was a company called Ecom Express. Um, it is now Warburg Pinker's CDC partners backed. Um, I call it at a one and a half million dollar valuation. And there is like a whole story around serendipity on how Ecom Express happened to me. Uh, so did Grab, so did Bolt, so did BBG and so many others. So three unicorns, um, all of them happened to us more than you know, me going out and trying to find them. So I think the, the proof of the pudding of being good angel investors is you know, essentially everyone in life gets that 4% opportunity where all the stars will collide and make something happen for you. Are you awake at that time to see that happening for you and are you willing to cut a check? That is really my story. I had 8 lakh 85,000 rupees in my bank account which I had earned from 3 years of working as an equity analyst. This was net savings. I put all of that into Ecom Express. That made 49x for me. I took the money and learnings from that, invested in Grab, made another 15x on it when I sold it to Reliance. Did the same with Shiprocket and a bunch of other things. Made a bunch of mistakes also. Then moved it to the fund. So, it's essentially you know, it's a lot of serendipity, it's a lot of chance. Uh, of course, there's a lot of hard work today when we run an institutional fund. My, my team's there, you know, while I'm sitting here and talking to you guys and wasting your time and my time, uh, they are actually the ones really working hard and finding a good startups for us to invest in. Um, so that is really our journey. Uh, ITI Growth is a venture capital fund. We've finished first fund. Uh, we did a small pilot. We are amongst the few funds who've actually been able to return money back, which is something nobody really talks to you about in these panels. Um, and now, yeah, we're on a second fund, so hopefully things go better, bigger. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and the uh, uh, last uh, panelist that we have from India Accelerator, uh, again, a very known name, very old name, uh, been into the uh, lot of chairs of the ecosystem at large, not just limiting to uh, investment. Uh, your uh, thing as well, maybe a little thing around uh, investment side of the India Accelerator and maybe your alignment with the investment or uh, somebody who helped them to invest in uh, startup, maybe first, whenever sure. it has happened. Yeah. So I'll give a quick overview. I'm actually working with this organization called Indian Angel Network. Okay. Um, so it's a consortium of about 500 angel investors that come together and invest in startups at the very early stages. So it was the first organization to actually institutionalize angel investing in India. We started back in 2006. 
And over the years, we've made investments in well over 200 companies. Uh, fortunate to have quite a few unicorns as a part of our portfolio, a few unicorns as well. Um, so it, it's been an incredible journey over the years. Um, we also have a fund where we, so on the network, it's sector agnostic, we invest at the seed or pre-series A level, and then we also have a fund which invests at the series A level, which is anywhere from one to three million dollars, and we have a third initiative called BioAngels, uh, because we saw a strong and growing need for experts to understand and evaluate startups in the healthcare sector. So uh, this is an initiative that's in collaboration between Indian Angel Network and BIRAC, which is a division of the Department of Biotechnology that brings together experts who understand healthcare, life sciences, pharma, and go ahead and invest, you know, they provide the right kind of guidance in terms of validation if this is a good startup or not. And then the investors that are interested in that sector go ahead and back it. Um, in terms of what do we look for in startups when we are investing, I would say, um, so you, you talked about one, what do we look for in startups and then how do we support startups? No, no, your first investment that has happened so around IM you? So has been around for a really long time, so I can maybe talk about a few much before I even came on board uh, to the platform. So I can talk about a few uh, companies that we've invested in. Druva is one. Okay. Uh, Unifor is another portfolio. Um, if I had to talk on the consumer space that y'all might recognize, Spinny um, is another company. Wow Momo uh, is another one of our portfolio. So I can talk about these, and then maybe when we get into specifics about angel investing, I can talk about uh, what, how does IN support uh, through that journey. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. I guess all the people on the stage have a lot of experience, a lot of time, a lot of portfolio. So if you go deeper, I guess within portfolio as well, there will be a lot of involvement and a lot of structuring might have happened uh, in line as well. Uh, a lot of things are happening in the angel investment side. I guess if we just divide uh, retail and angel investment separately uh, and just to state that somebody who wish to diversify the investment from stock mutual fund and then just putting small amount in startup without using much of the logic, but somebody says an investment, doing investment, it's retail. And Angel is somebody who is trying to actively involve in, around it uh, just to do it. Uh, what is happening in the Angel investment space? Question number one, I guess to all of you. Uh, and second is that because of the new regulations coming in, in line to syndicate changing and all, how uh, Angel investment scenario has been shifting. And now since last couple of years, especially after Shark Tank, and a lot of other big events happening uh, uh, as well. A lot of maturity or a lo lot of awareness is going much deeper to people who are HNIs, even smaller HNIs as well. And they all started getting into uh, angel investing. So what is happening in that space into your observation one, what is that is changing in that angel investment space uh, second? Uh, and third, if you can also cater that, uh, what new angel investor should uh, see or think before they do early investment into first five, first ten uh, startups? I guess it's a common question to all. Would love to hear everybody's thought on it. Uh, anybody can start. Yeah. We, we know, do you want to start this because you're like the se seasoned one year and then all of us can follow suit? Because you, you've, seen the, you've seen the entire startup ecosystem, right? Over the last few years. So uh, why don't we start with you? Asking? I think I'm also the oldest guy on the panel, so I get the honors, senior citizen. Um, you know, if you look, I, I think over the years, and I've seen this at least in India, right, the evolution of the angel ecosystem. Um, one is, of course, um, there are more people, which is a good thing. So there is true democratization of the angel ecosystem happening now. Um, earlier, you know, when we started this, I think early 2000, maybe 2000 to 2005, there were it was more of a clubby atmosphere, right? A few guys getting together and saying, we'll do this, and, and almost um, sort of keeping it a little exclusive. That has changed completely. And, and look at today's event. I mean, look at all of you, right? I mean, you, you know, it, it's amazing that there is so much energy, there's so much interest in this whole asset class. Uh, and that in itself, I think, is a, is a fairly big change uh, that is starting to happen. That's, that's one. Second is, with, with that kind of interest, especially the kind of interest that you're starting to see amongst angel investors in tier two, tier three towns, in smaller towns and cities across India, um, there's also a lot more opportunity for startups within the region to actually also raise local capital. And local capital actually is fairly important because what it also does is it provides 
key support for these companies as they're starting to really come up, right? So as they're really, so from the time of birthing to essentially the time that they're actually getting initial traction, local support becomes very important and that local support coming from tier two, tier three towns, especially in, in local startups is really important and that is another good thing that is uh, starting to uh, really happen, right? The third is the fact that there is now new regulations that are starting to happen, right? SEBI has now come up with new regulations, which to a certain degree makes it easy uh, to actually go ahead and create angel funds and for people to actually syndicate and be part of angel funds and do it that way as well. So uh, from that perspective, I think it's, it's really taken off well. Um, I think there's still significant opportunity for a lot more people to actually start uh, getting more and more into it. Um, people do realize that this is a very risky asset class, right? I mean, it's a binary bet. You know, you, in most cases, you can lose your money. In a few cases, you can make that. And, you know, whatever you sort of make as returns could substantially reduce the risk of the failures that you potentially would have in your portfolio. But if you actually pick and choose the right kind of companies, the right kind of co-investors that you can invest with, um, and also follow industries that you really know and understand well, the chances of success and the chance of really being, success, um, being able to really do well is fairly substantial. Uh, but overall, I think the industry, I mean, the ecosystem has really, you know, sort of evolved and become much more sophisticated from what it was 15, 20 years ago. And I think that will continue to happen and more and more angels with more and more. I mean, I'm now starting to see SIPs happening in angel investments, right? So I think it will start getting truly democratized from that perspective. Makes sense. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess I'm changing the question um, dynamics rather than putting the same question because, uh, I mean, it's very much uh, covered. Uh, just moving to this side of, uh, for now. Um, uh, Mohit, you are sitting into uh, board of a lot of startups, uh, seeing them, observing them, or even sitting on the board of the startup. How that dynamics changes when somebody do the investments? How the uh, journey looks like sitting on the board side of it? There are a lot of people who does investments. Some don't sit. Some sit. Some people don't know that what happens sitting in without sitting. If you can throw some light on it, it'll be good insight for other angel investors. So, um, you know. Most, most institutional investors prefer not exercising the right to take the board seat. Uh, we, particularly as a fund, we enjoy being on the board because I think uh, we like to think that we add a lot of value to our startups, uh, both from a policy side, we've, we've done policy level changes for some of them. Um, the key thing that I've seen, right, is there is a certain bit of discipline that comes onto the startups when you have an investor board member. Also. We try to be, like, because I'm also on the board of a few listed entities, right? The idea is, can I take the learnings from a larger listed entity and bring, it, bring the same discipline and learnings into the smaller startups? One of the biggest problems our industry uh, faces, and, you know, I was talking to Amar from Rekar, is that there's a lot of information asymmetry. What you see today in these events is probably 90% all a charade, right? There's only 10% truth to it. When you start actually going down into ROC numbers, things really become different. Right from all the angel investors who say that they've invested X and made Y, go to ROC, check, half of them haven't. Uh, for revenue numbers, people say, I'm at a revenue number of 600 crores, go to ROC, check, he's probably at 60. Right? So it's important that as board members, can we bring, see, it's, you know, we are basically setting up the right foundations for businesses of tomorrow. The constitution of Nifty 500 will change with a lot of startups going there. What Paytm did on its listing day versus what Paytm today is a mature founder. It's a founder who realized that I cannot con people. I cannot say shit and get away with it. My stock will get hammered. I wish every startup can get listed. I would love to hammer all the ones who keep bullshitting. And I would love to only reward the ones who keep doing well. And there are enough and more options of people who have done really well, who are truthful to their cause. And good board members make sure that that is that path is uh, going correct. At no point in time, because SoftBank has come, you're trying to lie to them about a revenue number and raise money. You're actually doing what is good for you, your business, your people. And that really is wh what our board representation is all about. Makes sense. Interesting. And like on that note, if I move to uh, Yamika, Yamika, how does the how, how does an opportunity or a scenario looks like uh, for a, a venture-backed studio startups? 
for an angel investor how how it is evolving how the journey is going how do you see that angel investment space is moving if you can throw some light here right so i mean previously you were asking uh, that how does the scenario for angel investing in general look like in the country etc so like i was uh, mentioning previously uh, that i have been talking to a lot of angel investors uh, over the past couple of years helping them become angel investors so these are people who want to start their angel investment journeys and uh, what i have figured out is like 95% of our network uh, today is young professionals uh, you know who are working in and around the startup ecosystem understand the risk and rewards involved in this ecosystem in this particular asset class and want to be a part of it like mohit mentioned uh, when he made his first investment they may not have a lot of disposable income with them in their bank accounts uh, but even with whatever there is they are uh, okay to place those bets because they understand the space they are working in this and they want to be a part of it so if you are not able to become a part of it as a founder because you know maybe there are 100 other things that you need to take care of you can become a part of the growth that is happening right now by being an angel investor and that is what i have been able to uh, see in the ecosystem and how or why have these uh, you know uh, young professionals been able to uh, become angel investors is because how vinod mentioned that uh, the entire ecosystem has become more open more democratized people have become more aware i mean what with shows like shark tank and uh, horse stable uh, startup and investment conversations have become living room and dining table conversations correct where my 7 year old knows what is the meaning of startup and investment and so does my 70 year old uh, father in law and in fact i mean i'm kidding i'm not kidding you when i tell you that my father in law actually sat me beside him and uh, he was like all right i have uh, some savings and how uh, to invest in which startup should i invest it in i'm like nice. please give it aside i'll tell you when you have to do that but that is what is happening right so uh, yeah i think it's a great advent with startups truly opening up as an asset class and it becoming really accessible to people uh, to start investing in thanks um uh, going to you and then coming to shobham uh, as an indian angel network you are at multiple cities and dealing with lot of startups and uh, angel investors aside uh, is there any differentiation coming in decision making for certain city people city it's a nice uh, way of putting money into startup is it different in different part of the country or is it similar if you can there's some part of it so at iim pre covid we used to have a hybrid model for uh, pitch sessions that we host so this is sessions where entrepreneurs come into the room and they present to an investor community so you'd have people sitting in person and then folks joining in on zoom online um post covid what's happened is all the investors from across the country and even globally you know overseas um join on the same platform at the same time uh you do definitely see a change in dynamic in the way folks think um for example there is a lot of technical knowledge that sits out of south india in terms of evaluating deals but overall i'm talking very generalized there are of course exceptions to this but you do see a certain sense of conservativeness um that they want to make sure that they are more stable bets versus riskier bets uh from investors in other geographies uh but what's happened post covid and because everyone's on the same platform is uh, there's a lot of knowledge exchange that's happening so what happens is when a founder comes at least at the iin pit sessions is the founder comes presents their investment opportunity a uh, post which we have an interaction so it's a very open like investors can unmute their microphones ask questions to the founders so every investor from across every geography is listening to experts from that particular domain ask questions and get a sense of how are other people evaluating companies in that space interesting yeah. and once the founder leaves the call after answering questions there's an internal dialogue that we have amongst the investor community that says hey these were the strengths of the company these were the weaknesses these are weaknesses we can work with the founder on and take it forward so um fortunately what's happened is pre covid we used to have um you know all the mumbai investors coming together and leading deals now we'll have someone from bangalore someone from delhi someone sitting out of bhopal they all come together lead a deal and that's where a lot of knowledge exchange happens they participate in companies across the country and then it's you you see the scope increasing in terms of pa more participation from 
um, and a lot of knowledge exchange happening. So I think it's maturing really well right now. Makes sense. Thank you. Uh, uh, you are meeting, so you recently closed your uh, fund and a uh, lot of people who are into angel investment also trying to become an LP with the fund as well. How do you see that set of scenarios happening? That people, how much they are getting involved directly, how much they are moving towards going to the fund managers and giving them the money to manage it. How do you see, because you are traveling, you travel to a lot of cities and met a lot of people. If you can share some insight from that journey. Sure, definitely. No, I think I've done a sort of a Bharat Darshan over the last one year. This is probably my 10th visit to Gujarat in the last one year. I think if I count Surat and Rajkot and Ahmedabad combined. Uh, no, so um, uh, I think a lot of the conversations very similar to what we've spoken about over here. Uh, what I've realized is that it's very simple logic. Jo dikta hai, wo bikta hai. Uh, right, which everyone I think core level India tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 doesn't matter, uh, everyone relates to. Today startups are um, a table conversation and that's why you see more angel investors getting involved. There's Shark Tank, there's at least 20 to 30 angel networks bare minimum in the country. Some are regional focused, some are national focused and they have this ability to uh, tap into the network of each and every city and then obviously the business houses and the HNIs and the NRIs, whatever you want to call it. Um, so. The landscape and the kind of conversations we have with angels who are looking at sort of investing in our fund as well is completely experience based. Um, I've seen scenarios wherein um, there have been angel investors who've been able to, let's say, make a 30, 40 X from their angel network investments and they're happy with that and they don't want to explore the fund concept. They're like, boss, the angel network sends me deals. I get to evaluate what kind of deals I want to invest in. Uh, it's working for me. Right? And there are guys uh, on the other end who are like, I have put a company in one company. I don't understand startups. I don't understand startup valuations. I don't know how someone can raise other 30x, 40x. Right? So there are uh, these two extremes of the coin. And the ones who made money through angel uh, networks who you know, had, that, had that experience and are positive on the ecosystem have also probably invested at a 70x valuation. Right? It's just very experiential on what they want to do going forward. So we come, uh, like what we found is the middle spot wherein um, they understand that building a portfolio is very important as well as not spending time in building that portfolio is important, right? So what we realize that a common, like a terminology which we'd had to use over time is that uh, just like how you understand how mutual funds work, it works in a very similar way. You give your money to a mutual fund manager, mm -hmm. he'll tell you that what are the sectors he's going to invest in mm -hmm. and then you just sit back and wait for the mutual fund manager to do its job, right? So uh, fund and talking to LPs for the fund works in a very similar way. I think Mohit would have uh, had some experiences um, there as well. So uh, you, have to, you have to simplify things and not overly complicated once you start talking about carry structure, operating fee, once I start talking about my thesis in biosciences, you know, it usually uh, gets gets people confused but I think you have to simplify it, uh, talk about ki paisa ka par ban hai. I think that's why the conversation ends, especially in, in a state like Gujarat, ki, like boss, how much are you going to make me? Uh, right, so <laughs> that's, that's, that's the thing that I've learned and again, it, it differs from state to state. Okay, uh, I guess last question to all of you, uh, that the network and the fund, whatever we are running right now, uh, which sector, what ticket size, which region that you are investing in uh, and a last message to angel investor, maybe one message to them for their future journey from here, either aspiring angel investor or an existing angel investor. Uh, so your thesis somewhat and a message to uh, angel investor. Yeah, uh, maybe we can start with. Sure. Thank you so come. much. Uh, yes. So uh, for us, uh, because I represent FAFC, which is India's largest venture builder, um, we work with idea stage startups, like pure idea. It could even be an idea in your head stage. That is the stage at which we look at ideas, founders, evaluate them, and raise funds in them. Uh, so that's something which is uh, not very prevalent. You will not find a lot of people doing that at an idea stage and we do. So if any of you have any ideas uh, at whatever maturity stage they are, please reach out. We'll be happy to look at them and help you with that, convert that idea into an actual product, startup, uh, yeah. revenue generating machine, etc. Uh, so that's that and on the angel investing side. One message to angel investors. Correct. On the angel investing side for all angel investors, um, please, please, please uh, don't put all your eggs in a basket. Like Shubham rightly mentioned that, uh, you know, people invest in one startup and then they lose money and then they, the entire vineyard turns sour for them. 
that's not how it works even if you have you know a very small corpus try and see how you can break it down and uh, invest across a bunch of startups so that you can truly experience and understand uh, how does investing and startup growth works and you can you know truly be a part of it and emerge uh, victorious so to say out of it makes sense thank you ma'am rapid fire yeah Otherwise, they'll kill me, I guess. <laughs> Very rapid fire, yeah. Yeah, you shared. Since I've already yeah. shared details about the fund and the network, I'll talk One about message. a message. I would say, uh, since, you know, building on what Yamika mentioned, that we should look at hedging our risk. And the whole point, it's a very risky asset class. We want to mitigate risks. So the best way to mitigate risks is to, one, invest across startups. Two, try to be a part of institutions that are whether local or pan-India, mm -hmm. where you get access to a larger cohort, right? Because if you're sitting in one place, it's very difficult to get access to very many deals. So if you're part of institutions, you get access to deals that that organization curates for you from across the country. Perfect. And you get to co-invest with other experts who are validating along with you that yes, even if you don't understand that sector well, that yes, you know, we think we should go ahead and invest with that. And there are many other benefits, but because of the yeah. paucity of time, I'll let the other part. Sorry, yeah, thank you so much. So, so I, you said what focus areas and then what was the other question? Yeah, sector, maybe ticket size. Uh, stage of the company or a region if any. Okay. Yeah. So I wear two hats, right? So I wear the hat of a, of a VC fund as well. So as a VC fund, I'm typically looking at later stage, which is pre-series A, series A rounds, by which time most companies would have reached some kind of product market fit, or uh, they'll have significant customer traction, uh, in which case then we make that investment. And on the flip side, when if I'm looking at angel investing, um, most of those tend to be fairly early. Uh, and in which case, then there are three elements that I clearly look for, right? One is the people, um, is the team passionate, is the team smart enough to try and be able to figure it out? Because when you're investing very early, you're typically investing in people. And this asset class, you know, whether it's angel or venture, it's largely a people investment business. You are investing ultimately in people and hoping that the people who are actually that you're investing in can actually make that investment work. So um, that's one element. The second, of course, is the market. And, and, you know, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, even though we are a 1.4 billion people market, as they claim it is, um, it's not necessarily all, all there, right? So we have to get very realistic with that. So we look at markets and then ultimately the product or the service that somebody's trying to really build out. Uh, focus areas for us um, that I think have the potential, um, one, of course, is enterprise software. And one thing is that Surat is actually now starting to become a fairly hot bed for enterprise SaaS, right? I mean, a lot of SaaS companies that are now coming out of uh, Surat. And the good thing is a lot of them are profitable businesses. Um, so enterprise software is one area we will look at. Healthcare is another one uh, that I look at. Um, deep tech um, is something that I think, especially with AI and space and a bunch of other things, is going to start getting really interesting. And then finally, of course, you know, things around climate uh, and financial services is one area that we look at. Um, as angels and, and as investors, I think, you know, a lot of our panelists spoke about this, right? Is the one, I think you want to look at a mix, right? You want to essentially look at maybe committing capital to a fund and co-investing with a fund if you can, because you get a lot more expertise and you get a lot more deeper analysis of potential investment opportunities than a traditional angel or a traditional angel network would do. And a lot of this is also theses and, and you know, uh, industry driven. So mm -hmm. you get to actually see the best of deals there and if you can actually co-invest with some of them, uh, that becomes I think a very attractive option and, and, and in my opinion also a lot more safer option uh, as well. Makes sense, makes sense. Shubham, and you? Right. I just yeah. realized that I didn't speak about the fund at all. Uh, so very quick. Uh, so I'm the CFO and partner of Eravati Ventures. Uh, we are a 100 crore fund. Uh, we invest across pre-seed to pre-series A companies, uh, largely early revenue. Okay with pre-revenue, but commercialization should be visible uh, in the next six to nine months. Uh, we do deep tech, biosciences, enterprise tech, and agri-tech. So those are the four larger areas uh, that we're involved in. Deep tech and enterprise tech, both are catch-all terms. There are subsectors that we do look at, but I'm not going to uh, get into that right now. Um, message to the angel investors, I think, would be to keep faith. I think the India story is very strong. 
uh, right? Uh, the news like funding winter and like valuation both high hai ya valuation both low hai. I think those are uh, those are just things for the news. Those are more like treated as clickbait and move on. But I think the the India story is strong. I think if you keep on investing, keep on believing in the India story, you're going to make a lot of money. Thank you. Thank you. Super, sir. I'm just going to try and keep this quick and try and be as non-controversial as possible so that you allow me to walk out of here without hitting me. Uh, listen to what I say very carefully if you're an angel investor. Angel investing is like walking into a casino and playing roulette, all right? No problem in playing it. All of us love to gamble at some point of time in life, right? You, when you drive your car on the roads of Surat, you're technically gambling with your life. That's fine. Subha, Subha. Okay. It's okay. Uh, yeah. So angel investing is a lot like a casino table. You may win sometimes and you may lose a lot of times. But the most important thing is you should own your own casino. Don't go to others' casinos and play there because the owners of those casinos will always win and you, your chances of losing are very high. Now, I don't want to say too much. If you're smart enough, you've understood what I say. If you want to angel invest, go ahead and do it, but build your own thesis, build your own networks, build your own style of doing it. Don't try to mimic platforms or people. Don't try and go and be part of syndicates which you have no access to. Don't try and just be part of something because everyone else is doing it. That's my only advice to you as an angel investor. As a fund, what's worked well for us and what continues to be our sector thesis is the fact that we have to be dreamers. India is changing, the world is changing every 18 months now. You cannot say I'm you know, going to be only investing in X, Y, Z sectors, right? So we believe that sector agnostic is a good strategy. We like to be able to predict what's going to be great 12 or 16 months from now. And that's what has been successful for us in the fund. So our fund two is again sector agnostic. We straddle through early stage, but we go all the way to series A and on our balance sheet from ITI, we can even do pre-IPO transactions. So that is a long shot on us. And thank you so much for being a very patient audience. Thank you. Thank you. Now you know about all of them. Uh, just a closing remark, do not, reach in do not hesitate in reaching out to them and others as well. I've seen a lot of people hesitate many a times. So closing statement, uh, so on that note, I'll closing the panel discussion. Thank you so much for being an amazing panelist and thank you so much for being a solid audience and sorry for taking some time. Thank you so much everyone.